So this video is about solving 3x3 three three systems of equations using matrices. If you haven't already had a look at the introduction in example 1, I would recommend that you do so. I just go over the background to why we would use it, what a system of equations is, and as an example of how we're going to use matrices to solve a 2x2 two two system of equations, something that's a wee bit more straightforward. So here we've got a 3x3 three three system and we're going to look at making an augmented matrix and then using the elementary row operations to create a upper triangular matrix so we can then solve for x, y, and z. Okay, let's go. So we've got our three equations written here with all the variables x, y, and z. First thing we want to do is to create an augmented matrix. And all we do with that is we're going to write down all of the, the numbers involved, all the coefficients. Um, and remember in the previous example, what I did say was right from the start, um, have a look at the coefficients there and write down the smallest one first. Sometimes it just makes things easier. And in this case here, it's the bottom one, which is one. So I've got one and three, negative one, and negative four is my constants matrix. So I've got my shape that I'm going to create like that. So 1, 3, negative 1 and negative 4. It doesn't matter which order you put the other ones in, so I'll just write down uh, negative 2, so that's the top one, negative 2, negative 3, positive 1 and 1, and the other one is 4, negative 1, positive 1 and 17. Take a moment to recheck all of your signs, it's really easy to get them mixed up and to forget about a negative or make them all negative so just make sure you've got it all correct so that's our three by three uh, system of equations turned into an augmented matrix we're then going to use our row operations remember we call them nominally row one two and three we want to make a new matrix and we're heading towards um, an upper triangular matrix and we do that, first of all, by trying to put with an upper triangular matrix, this number and this number at this position here, they all have to become zero. We can't do it all at once. The first thing we do is we look at that first column. We're going to make those two values zero. Notice, therefore, that we don't need to change the first row. So we write down 1, 3, negative 1, negative 4. But we do want, in row 2, that first value to be zero. So we need to come up with any, uh, a way of combining two of the rows so that that first value is zero. It stands to reason we might as well choose row one and row two in this instance. So what I'm going to do is, let's get rid of those highlighted bits and we'll focus on these two. So what can I do to make zero from them? Well, if I double one and add negative two, that will give me zero. So in other words, we're saying double row two, double, double row one, and add row two. Let's just check that. Double one is two, add negative two is zero. Good. So I have to do the same then to all of the columns in those two rows. So I'm on to then that column two. I do the same thing. So we've got 2 row 1 is 6, plus negative 3 gives me 3. And then the next column, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 1 gives me negative 1. And with over on the right hand side, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, plus 1 is negative 7. So we just go along uh, until we've done all those calculations. I put these markers in to help you see where I was looking at. I hope that kind of makes sense. So, we then want to do the same in row 3. And we want to put a 0 in that position there. And you can either use row 1 or row 2 to do it. So, for instance, we could do row 4 row 1 minus row 4. That would be fine. But because uh, row 2 and 3 are opposite in signs, 
I always like to add rather than subtract, just because sometimes we get double negatives. So in this case here, we've got 2 row 2 plus row 3. That's going to give me 0 as well. Just check. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Add 4 is 0. Great. What did I get with the rest of them? Uh, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Add negative 1 gives you negative 7. Two ones are two, add one is three, and then two ones are two, add 17 is 19. We're nearly there, we're, in fact we're two thirds of the way to getting an upper triangular matrix. The only position then that we need to change is this one here, which needs to also be a zero, which means that we can write down, in fact, the first two rows without changing them because we're not, we don't need to change these anymore. That becomes 0, 3, negative 1, negative 7. It's only this last row now that's going to have to change. And we don't have a choice now uh, to sort this one out because we're looking for a 0 here in, in the negative 7. If we try to use row 1, because row 1 has a, a value at the very left hand side, that would be introducing a, no, a non-zero value back down uh, on the left hand side on the first element of that last row. So we can't do that. What we must do is use row 2 and row, th row 3 together. And unfortunately, the only way to make 0 out of 3 and negative 7 is to make 21. So that would be effectively... 7 row 2, that's 21, add 3 row 3, which is negative 21, and that's going to give us 0, which is what we wanted. Uh, we then still have to work out the other ones, so go back up to negative 1, 7 negative 1's are negative 7, add 3 times 3, which is 9, gives me 2, and then 7 times negative 7 is negative 49. Look at the side here, because it, and then 3, add 3 times 19. 3 19s are 57. Don't feel you have to do it all in your head. It's going to give me 57, subtract 49 is 8. So I've got an 8 here. So be careful that you get it right. It's not a, a mental exercise. You can write stuff down. Okay, the good news is that with these row operations, I now have an upper triangular matrix, which means I can extract the answers from this grid. What are the answers? Well, I'm looking for the values of x, y, and z, and we start at the bottom and work our way back up. Because remember that the 2 and the 8, 2 with the dotted line 8 means 2z equals 8. That third column there is the Z column effectively. So we can say, so 2Z equals 8, which means Z must have a value of 4. And then going up uh, to row 2, we've got 3Y minus Z equals negative 7. If we know Z is 4, 3y minus 4 equals negative 7. If you add 4 on to both sides, we get 3y equals negative 3. So y equals negative 1. And back up to row 1, which says that 1x plus 3y minus z equals negative 4. We know now that uh, 3y is going to be negative 3. So that becomes x minus, whoa, x minus 3, minus z, not 2, uh, minus 4, there, equals negative 4, z minus 7 equals negative 4, so x is equal to add 7 on, x equals 3. So there are the three solutions, I'll write that, the solution is, remember, generally write it in coordinate form. We'll talk another time about why we do that, but it's a convenient way to write the three 
answers. Remember, we write them x, y, z in the order that they came in in the equations, not in the order you find them. Um, so make sure you get them the right way around. That is how we use matrices and row operations to solve a 3 by 3 system of equations. So plenty of practice required to get this right, and I can't tell you how many ways there are to make a mistake. There are so many mistakes waiting to happen, mainly because a lot of it you tend to do mentally. Uh, but always double check all your work and make sure that your numbers are right um, and try and keep as much positive as you can. Okay, so best of luck with that. Try and understand this and then practice some other ones.